Hey, hey, what's going on? Accelerate. I am Sherman Lee, and I'll be talking about artificial intelligence and blockchain. And I know these are the two buzziest of words around in the last couple of years, but I'm going to share with you why artificial intelligence and machine learning needs to be decentralized. Um, to give you a little background, I, I'm the founder uh, of Raven Protocol, where I work on decentralized and distributed deep learning. And we're creating a network of compute nodes that utilize idle compute power for the purposes of AI training, where speed is the key. And I, I actually, I never thought that I would be working in the AI field. I grew up in Oakland, California, in a very rough neighborhood, and that was my local liquor store. Uh, we bought snacks, drinks, ice cream, and uh, everything at that store. We would stop in every single day. But so would all the drug dealers on that street. And sometimes even at my own house, I would find crack rocks in the mailbox. And, um, you know, when the police patrolled around and the drug dealers needed to find a place to hide their stash, uh, which was our mailbox. Um, you know, when all was said and done, they came knocking on my door looking for it later. And this was wild as a seven-year-old kid. Um, things that I just shouldn't have been learning. Somehow, I ended up getting into UC Berkeley. Um, and I studied computer science. Um, and one of my first jobs uh, out of college was a machine learning engineer at... Um, Yahoo. Um, I was the first engineer on the team and it helped scale the content platform to 600 million users. My, my, my area of specialty was specifically was uh, in clustering and uh, on news article content. So if you've ever read a bunch of news articles about one story in search or uh, the C-related articles at the bottom of any news article, you probably have seen my work. Um, using machine learning on the content platform wasn't an easy feat. I worked with a team of 25 research scientists and we had 40,000 servers running on Hadoop. Uh, it was literally my job to make machine learning um, scale in uh, production. And I, I worked on this kind of technology um, and it was amazing, but this kind of technology is trapped inside of mega corporations uh, like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, the, the computing power, the data sets, the research, the technology, um, all of this, and they're, they're hoarding it for themselves. So AI today is totally centralized. It's mostly a privilege of large companies with rich resources. And, um, you know, it's these companies are able to hire expensive AI machine learning teams that develop models which produce more data, which enriches the company's data sets. And this is a, a vicious cycle and has resulted in companies such as Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon acquiring pretty much unprecedented levels of knowledge and influence on our daily lives. Um, and... I always wondered, can a, a small startup stand shoulder to shoulder with these giants? I found out the hard way. Um, that's me in the picture with the double P signs in 2017. Uh, I look happy, I, 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 like, but I was super stressed out during this period. I was running an AI startup. Um, user growth was coming fast. Costs exploded. And on AI training alone, we were being invoiced $5,000 to $10,000 a month from um, AWS. And these training times were quite slow. Two weeks to train a 1 million image data set was not acceptable. I, I thought that because I did machine learning at scale already at Yahoo, I could pull off the same feat as a small startup. I was in for a shock on, on how incredibly hard it was without the resources of a big company. Um, and to really compete with the giants, we have to start putting the power of AI into the hands of the community. In the last five years or so, we, we've made a bit of progress. 
in uh, phase one, I think advanced techniques in AI and ML, uh, you know, like deep learning got open sourced. Um, the incredible work from AI researchers got into the hands of AI practitioners via numerous papers being published. And then in phase two, the work from AI practitioners got into the hands of software developers via implementations on the GitHub, on GitHub. Uh, and this led to a chain of events where structured and optimized machine learning, deep learning frameworks were created, like Torch, Tiano, MXNet, CAF, and of course, TensorFlow. That was just the beginning. Uh, it, 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 it was what I called an MVP. It's validation that there was a huge demand for companies to leverage existing AI and machine learning frameworks. And living through all that is what makes me believe that blockchain will transform the entire AI industry. Because if we successfully decentralize three key things, how we get training data, how we find research algorithms, and the ability to leverage compute resources, we will be able to live in a world where AI and uh, machine learning models get better faster. Without the rich resources, rich resources of a large company, um, individuals in the AI community and small startups will have access to this power and create applications that would have never seen the light of day and blockchain enables decentralized ai training data right so having enough data to train ai and ml models has been the never-ending challenge for everyone traditionally only companies with a ton of users have access to large data sets decentralization is a perfect fit for getting more data sets into the hands of the ai community Companies like Ocean Protocol and Quadrant reward users for supplying that data. And companies like Effect.ai are rewarding users for collecting, correctly labeling that data. Uh, blockchain also enables the sharing of research algorithms and trained models. While data is the key in training AI ML models, Algorithms that run in a decentralized and distributed manner is needed to process that data. Uh, you know, there's companies like Singularity Net and Cortex that have marketplaces where you can purchase trained models, uh, AI services, and use algorithms that are developed by other people in that marketplace. Um, and then blockchain enables the sharing of idle compute resources. Leveraging idle compute power helps to run computationally intensive AI and ML training. We all own idle compute power, and you should be able to earn money by lending that out all while attending this live stream. Um, you know, you could literally get paid for watching live streams. And uh, companies like Gollum, Perlin, and Hypernet all have novel ways of leveraging idle compute power. And obviously, I'm one of the founders of uh, Raven Protocol, and we're creating a network of compute nodes that utilize idle compute power for the purposes of AI training, where speed is the key. We have a very specific use case to perform fast AI training, allowing companies to iterate on their models quickly. And we discovered our, our unique value proposition uh, quite quickly. Um, Raven simply performs AI training where speed is the key. We developed a completely new approach to distribution that speeds up a training run of a million images from two weeks down to a few hours. Um, and existing deep learning distribution methods and frameworks have come a long way, no doubt about that, right? However, it still needs gargantuan servers for the speeds at which demand is increasing for AI. Uh, you know, data and model parallelism have been used to optimize this, but it creates inherent latency in the network, and it's just not scalable beyond a certain limit. At Raven, we solve latency by chunking that data into really small pieces, uh, down into the bytes. Uh, we maintain its identity and then distribute it across uh, the host of devices with a call to action, which are the, the gradient calculations. 
And this is the, the screenshot for the first time uh, we ever fired up the Raven network. Our proof of concept worked in a local dev environment. To get this to work in production with external compute de devices is going to be extremely hard work. Um, and, you know, and thus, we had to start building our own framework. We couldn't simply build upon one that existed, as you know, our approach was really unique. Um, you know, other existing frameworks have a different approach for calculation and data distributions, which couldn't solve for our purpose. Uh, so we had to rewrite the foundation layer, which would support minuscule distribution over a distributed setup. And we use something called a dynamic graph computation. So all, all, all the frameworks, they, they operate on tensors and are built on the computational graph as a, a, a directed acyclic graph. And, and most of these current and popular deep learning frameworks, um, including TensorFlow, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the, 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 um, All the frameworks operate on tensors and are built on the computational graph as a directed acyclic graph. And most of the current and popular deep learning frameworks, including TensorFlow, um, the computational graph is static in nature. So however, frameworks like PyTorch is dynamic, giving a lot more options to researchers and developers to fiddle around with their creativity and imagination. A major difference between static and dynamic computation graph is that in the former uh, language modeling where the, the shape of the tensors are variable during the course of training, the, the benefit of a dynamic graph is its concurrency. And it is robust enough to handle the contributor node addition or deletion, making the whole Raven training sustainable. So Raven is thus capable of eliminating the latency and scalability issues with um, both of these approaches. In fact, the model is intact at the master node, and the heavy lifting is distributed in the tiniest snippets uh, of data, subs uh, data subsets over the network of contributors. Then the, the resultant gradients after calculations that happen in the, at the node slash contributor end are sent back to the master node. Um, and this just creates a ton of difference as it's easier uh, for calculations to pass through from machine to machine rather than creating multiple replicas of a, a, a complicated um, model. And I, I know that was a lot of stuff to wrap your head around, but if you want to learn more about why artificial intelligence and machine learning needs to be decentralized, or if you want to learn more about Raven Protocol, feel free to reach out to me or the team, um, you know, founders at ravenprotocol.com. And in fact, if you do reach out, we'll send you a uh, hundred Raven tokens. Um, so one last thing before we hop off, uh, I want to say the, the accelerate team, uh, does an amazing job at educating people in AI and machine learning. So if you have an opportunity to work with them, please do it. Don't hesitate.